What do we have here? Oh shoot. Hey, what do you know? They're a Hoyt authorized dealer here. Just got to Wild Arrow and I'm meeting up with Matt Davis. He's gonna help me put this thing together. Uh, Jeremiah's here. <laughs> Last time I was here on the TV, we were on a podcast with Gritty Bowman. And now I'm on the movie screen with Zach Griffith. Crazy. It's still weird to see my face up on a TV. Oh, you're already already getting some shots fired? Dude, just getting warmed up. You gonna help me put this thing together? Put that bad ride together right now. I've had this for a few months. Well, probably more than that, huh? Year. <laughs> I had this thing for a long time. And unfortunately, I have failed to uh, build it because I don't know how to do it and it's just been pushed aside so Matt's gonna help me. We're gonna show you guys the basics of putting, what do you call it, putting, building your... Yeah, we're gonna just put it together, kind of talk about some of the basics things to look at, brace height, tiller, knock height, a couple things like that. And then in part two, we're gonna talk about tuning the bow, arrow setup, all that stuff. And as always, we are at Wild Arrow. Wild Arrow. These guys are busy. If you need work done, you better get your bows down here. <laughs> yeah, come take a number. <laughs> get mine. Yeah, that's right. That's you guys right. selling a lot of bows? Yeah. Yeah, it's oh. been busy. Tax return season, man. Guys are putting in for tax. Uh -huh. They got money. Like, it's uh, for a bow hunter, it's go time, man. Really, wait, you got five months for to get ready. A lot of guys are preparing now instead of like August. You'll yeah. Still get, yeah, you'll still, still get, get that, that big but, time. No, you want to get your bow done right now. That way you feel confident with it come the fall, you know. So. I see you've cleaned up a little bit in the we, shop. Yes, we me and Brandon this morning, Saturday. It looked like a windstorm came through here. That's it was, was yeah, <laughs> it was bad. So I was like, before we work, we gotta at least clean. I'm gonna show you guys what's inside this thing. Okay, we'll come over here. Come over to a nice clean counter space. So like I said, I've had it for a long time and I've never literally once opened it up or taken it out of this thing. So, so this is also yeah. an unboxing video for those of you who wanna get a Hoyt. It comes in this nice case, Yep. limbs, Okay. Yep. Limbs. All right. Nice individual what? sleeves there to protect them, and then got some tip protectors there. So on the back of the limb, um, it's going to tell you the weight, and it's also going to tell. Obviously, this is the bottom limb. Um, it's going to tell you which bot. Excuse me. Which limb is the top, and which limb is the bottom, and that is important because they are tillered, and I'll explain what tiller is here shortly as we're setting it up, but they are tillered specifically to a top and bottom limb, so don't put them on upside down. I have a 45 pounds, a medium. Yep, so, and that's the length of the limb. There's short, oh. medium, and long length limbs, and so there's different lengths of risers as well, so depending on draw length or the application, of the bow or what you're going to be doing with it if you're just target shooting if you're going to be hunting with it out of a tree stand out of a ground blind and all these different things there's a whole bunch of stuff that factors into a specific bow build it's kind of like you know some guys prefer a 35 inch axle to axle bow some like a 30 or a 32 and a lot of times that correlates to the drawing one important thing about the satori it's an ILF bow, that means international limb fitting. That means that um, there's other types of limbs that will fit on it. There's other manufacturers out there. It's kind of an agreement that uh, manufacturers have one with another. Pocket is the same, the limbs the same. So if, if wanted, I could go buy some other limbs and throw them in there. They'd, exactly. They'd fit if they Correct. were the IF what? ILF. ILF. Yep. International right. limb fitting. So and the ILF's awesome because you can invest uh, money into a really nice riser and if you aren't sure on the length of bow or what weight you want to shoot you can go get some pretty inexpensive limbs and try those out and then you can kind of get a feel for it so when I'm when people ask me you know what bow should I get I always recommend an ILF riser and from there they can play with limbs so this looks like it comes with some tools yep my string and this was inside this pocket yep, and that's the last pocket. thing right so there's nothing else in there nope that's, that's it. it it's got everything you're going to need to uh to build that out appropriate keys uh their length of string is obviously important this is for a 60 inch bow so this is a 17 inch riser and the reason we got eric a 60 inch bow is because eric has a draw length that's around 28 inches or so and so by doing that, because he has a little bit shorter limb versus a longer limb, he's going to get more performance out of these. Obviously, 
at a shorter draw length, a longer limb isn't going to be flexed as much. So a shorter limb, mm -hmm. you're gonna get more efficiency out of that system. So that's another thing to uh, take into account when you're building a specific bow. Another important thing, just to mention, the weight that is mentioned on here, it, these limbs are 45 pounds at 28 inches. So any set of limbs that you're looking out there for, if you're ordering limbs, short, medium, long, or whatever, whatever the weight is, that's the weight of those limbs at 28 inches of draw. So where Eric has a 27 inch draw, they'll probably be in that 43-ish pound range, which is great. But take that into account when you're calculating um, the poundage of limbs that you want to shoot at your dollar. What are you working on? I am working on the RX-1 from Hoyt. I'm supposed to get one of those soon, guys. Soon, soon, soon. So he's working on that for somebody else. But yeah, we're going to be over here today. Today we're focusing on a trad bow, all right? Back to the trad life. Like I said, this first video, we're just basically going to assemble the bow. And then we'll do another video on the tuning process, which is can be lengthy but we'll find out so uh, top limb all that's gonna do is simply click in if there's play in it that's okay once the bow's actually strung up it's going to engage this tiller bolt and the limb will stay in place as long as you hear this little detent clip in so that looks so easy look at that yeah that's it that's it if I can oh see you hear that little click done that was the detent going in wow now your bows Put together. Well, thanks for uh, watching the video, guys. We're going to throw the string on and we'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That seemed very easy. I mean, I didn't know what to expect. Yep. Uh, that's why I wanted Matt's help. He's experienced. So I didn't even know that's how they got put together. Yep. So next, we're going to throw the string on. Now, the string, there is a top and there is a bottom. So if you look at these two loops, one is slightly larger than the other. The top loop or the bigger loop goes on the top and this one goes on the bottom. The reason for that is as you're stringing the bow up, this top one will be slid into place. That's the top, we'll always start on the top. We'll slide that down, see how easy that is. Yep. And because it's longer it can, we'll throw this guy on the bottom. That kind of just slides back up to the top. Now, another important thing is this is called a stringer. Okay, this is what we use to put the string on the bow. We have to put tension into the limbs so we can slide you know, because obviously it does not reach right now. There's multiple ways to string a bow. I always recommend using a stringer because it won't twist your limbs. I like it. Which is a whole other topic for another which day. Which this was in there, just so you guys know. This yep, came with, came with, with the, the bow. So you threw that guy on there. And the way to string a bow, so we've got this loop piece on the bottom. Okay, because obviously we don't need to move the bottom loop. We need to move the top. So this is strung through like this. And this little black humadigi. It's rubber so it grips the limb when it's under tension. You call it a humadigi? Humadigi. It's called a stringer. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm gonna do, and I don't know if you want me to scoot back or if you want to show it. So we'll go like this. And you just grab the center of the bow, center that, and you pull straight up. And see this is holding. That's gonna load the string up, or excuse me, the limb. Pull it up. and then let it down. Always double check to make sure the string is strung up properly, both on the top and the bottom. Make sure the loops are fully engaged. You do not want that to come off and smack you in the face. That will take your eye out. It's happened. Not to me. See? Nice. Now she's all strung up. So we've got it strung and we're gonna put the shelf and the striker plate together. There's a whole bunch of different things that come with this and I'll explain a little bit what those are. This is the actual striker plate. There's a calf hair piece that you pull off. It's got 3M adhesive on the back. It's gonna go on there. This is what the arrow's gonna contact. These little individual shims that come with it are to adjust the center shot of the bow and what that does with the recurve it actually affects the tune. We can talk about that in the other video. This little guy right here is supposed to go on the shelf. I highly recommend you do not use this ever. These things <laughs> are just garbage. They cause more tuning issues than anything in the world. You gotta think about it. A feather has a, a sharp quill on the front. And as that sharp quill is coming into this, there's a number of things that could happen to cause inconsistent tuning. So you can throw this away. No offense to Hoyt, I don't ever use it. The uh, nice alternative is they send these two guys 
which are supposed to be put on a limb tip. I do not recommend putting them on there simply because they aren't going to really make your bow that much quieter and they're going to come off over time. Instead, I cut one of these and use that on the shelf. So that way, I've got calf hair on the side and calf hair on the bottom, and that's going to provide the most consistent tune. Throw that guy in there. Don't mess up. This is my first rodeo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that wraps all the way around. Now the calf hair is directional. So that's important as you're building the second piece. The one that comes for the side plate is all set up. Eric shoots a backwards bow. No, lefties so, united. All so trad life right lefties. Here, this guy right here goes into that hole that is basically the burger hole if you wanted to shoot um, an elevated rest you could do that set got a set screw on the opposite side and that's simply going to yeah. screw into place and lock that strike plate into its position and you don't want to snug it too much because you can strip out there's a there's a the piece there's, that the screw is actually going into on the strike plate you can strip that out, so just very gently snug it down. This is radiused on the striker plate and on the shelf as well. And what that does is it provides minimal contact on the arrow, which is going to increase the efficiency of the tune. So when I'm putting this calf hair on, I don't need to cover the whole thing. I can just cover where the arrow is going to touch. The high point. Exactly, the high point. And just keep it very, very minimal. Pretty basic. All I did was take the thickest part of that, cut it off. You can kind of measure it out so it's not hanging off and it's going to sit perfectly flush against that shelf when we put it on here. Pull that guy off. Alrighty. Get that nice and snug up against there. Press that on there. Nice and tight. Snug down this striker plate real quick. All I'm going to do, simply snug that down as soon as it start, stops moving. Give it a little bit of tension, and then you're done. And now, your shelf and striker plate are all set up. Okay, let's talk about, let's get a bow square. We need a bow square. Okay, to the back. Just like on a compound, um, a recurve has, to my oh, back. Hey guys. Um, it has a brace <laughs> height. <sighs> Man, it's right out there, like your eyes. I know, I went out at lunch and it yeah. was, uh, I couldn't see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see spots. I can't even see your face. So, <laughs> so brace height, just like on a compound, is measured from the throat of the grip to the front of the string. Now, on the Hoyt, if you look in the owner's manual, I believe the recommended brace height from Hoyt is eight to nine inches. This is at nine inches. The way to adjust that is unstringing the bow and adding or removing twists from the bottom loop okay and by adding and removing uh, twists you're either going to lengthen the string or shorten the string and that will affect that distance Obvious, obviously if it's longer it's going to shorten it if it's shorter it's going to lengthen it tiller on the top a little over seven and a half and it should be a positive eighth on the top if the limb bolts are bottomed out pretty dang close which is perfect, and that is tillered for positive eighth on the top is tillered for a split finger. Um, I bottom all my limbs out anyways, just because I want all the efficiency I can out of a bow. You have to adjust the knock height just a little bit, and tiller plays into the bow because obviously this limb is under a little more tension, right? But as I draw the bow back, I can't do it. I'm just gonna draw left-handed because I'm shooting three under. This limb is going to end up further back than this one. So if this one's ahead, it's basically like cam time. And that means that the limbs are going to fire at the same time. Um, even if your arrow's knocked like this, as you drop back, it's going to become parallel. And the distance from here to here at full draw will be the same. So that's important too. I realized as I was playing with the string that I didn't have a knock set on here. So basically what I like to do, so you'll use a bow square, you'll square it up. And I like to start out where Eric has a shorter draw length, I'm going to start out at half an inch. You want to do a knock set on the top and the bottom, and that will ensure that your uh, knock isn't slipping on the serving when you're actually tuning the bow. Uh, if you shoot three under, um, obviously when you remove your hand, that means that knock can, can drift down and that can affect your overall tune. So 
We'll throw that on and then it will be ready to shoot. And all I've done here is I've squared up the bow and I'm starting at half inch high like I said and all I'm gonna do is tie knots on either side, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then what that does is it allows me to adjust them by twisting them because obviously this is like the threading on a screw that serving is. So as I turn it one way or the other, I can adjust that knot height, which is important when we get into tuning. But for right now, we're just gonna start right here. We're gonna throw one on the top, throw one on the bottom, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so we've basically gone through the most bare bone setup you can go through. Got the top limb on the top, the bottom on the bottom. Brace height is within manufacturer specifications, as is the tiller. We got a knock set on there. Now it's ready to shoot and tune. So I hope you learned a few things. I did. Like I said, I've never had a trad bow until now. So we're going to go... I'll probably just take some generic arrows that they have here at Wild Arrow. Just go shoot a little bit, just get a few arrows through it. And on the next video, the next time we're here with Matt, we'll tune it and make sure everything is perfect for what? Me and my leg? Yeah, and yeah, everything. everything. The, th the difference between a recurve and a compound, a compound is a machine and it's going to do the same thing every single shot. You can do a whole bunch of different stuff and relatively it's just going to repeat itself. Recurve, not so much. It's your fingers, your hand draw like all that stuff factors in. So that's that's part of the challenge, the fun part about traditional archery. We'll get that set up for Eric and he told me he's gonna kill an elk with it this year. So <laughs> he committed to it, he told me, gave me his word. We got Eric setting up on his first shot. He doesn't have the right tab, unfortunately, <laughs> being a lefty. This is a... Uh... Left-handed split finger tab. Yep. <laughs> or a right-handed split finger tab, yeah, which so, is why it's upside down. So I'm gonna be shoot, shooting all three under. What do you recommend? Just whatever is most comfortable? Three under for me, um, that's that's my preferred method. It's a little more comfortable, but everybody's different. You gotta try and experiment. You might shoot split finger, you might shoot three under. Three under obviously means three fingers underneath. Split means one on the top and two underneath. Which this would be for, but correct for person. All right, I'm gonna let this thing fly. All right. I'm going for that orange dot in the middle. Okay. Woo! Pretty dang close. So when it comes time to actually tune it and do everything for me, it'll, we'll be getting my right arrows and everything. Yep. For now, we're just shooting for fun, I guess. Low left. Yeah, this is gonna be fun, man. Trying something new. Trying something new. All right, guys, we're gonna throw up an orange dot so I have some a little more something to aim at. Got a foot high. <laughs> Make sure to anchor in all the way. Anchor. See, that's what I'm not used to is when I pull this back, I literally just go. Fadoo. Yep. Everyone just anchor. want. Everyone just wants to let go. It's the same thing as a compound. You got to anchor. Yeah. That's create that consistent point. I put my pointer finger in the corner of my mouth. That looked really good, dude. I've got a lot of work. And you notice that that was a weight that Eric could control, which is super, super important. And that was why one of the reasons we talked about getting this bow weight because it's something you can learn on as you get more comfortable. Muscle memory is 100% different than a compound, which isn't doesn't seem like a ton, but it can be. Recurve, I mean. Whoops. <laughs> We're gonna have to edit that out, guys. Oh, cut, 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 cut. <laughs> yeah, this will be a great start for me. Yep. Starting from scratch, first timer, and uh, yeah. I'm excited to get some tips from you, Matt. Yeah, buddy. How to shoot, how to anchor. And... Well, that's a wrap. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. I had fun. We shot a few uh, arrows through the dang thing, and I hit the target a couple times, actually. I missed a lot of the other times, though. But there's a lot to learn. Hopefully, if you guys want to get started in shooting a trad bow, these videos will help you. Matt will most likely be the host of every time I come down here. Matt will have to help because, like I said, I know nothing about this stuff. But just this week alone, I went out and shot my pistol, which I hadn't really done at a gun range. And I'm shooting a trad bow for the first time, or my trad bow for the first time. So get out there and try something new, guys, if you're really wanting to go get in, get started with either of these things or maybe something different. I would encourage you to just make that action step and just go do it. Take yourself to the bow shop, get yourself to a gun range, um, get out there, enjoy it, and be safe and have fun. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Me and Matt are going to shoot the bows a little bit more. 
and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.